Hey, that everyone. One again. Welcome to episode 141 of Bucks UK TV. Tim, Murph, Dougie joining me today. Dougie, let's start with you. It was the Falks. It's the hope that kills you. Um, what was your perception of the game overall? I'm amazed that we were within a Hail Mary of winning it. I don't know how that happened. Um, it was, as always with the Bucks, an emotional roller coaster up and down throughout. Um, reading back through the comments today on the forum, there was people leaving, people coming back. It was, it was just one of those days, like um, pretty much like the the pre Brady days of being a Bucks fan. You know, and anything could happen. Um, I felt the uh, the turnovers, the turnovers, the turnovers. Uh, without them, we could have won it. We could have done some better play calling throughout. It was there. It was there to win. And we, we blew it. So, yeah, so there's both hope and dashed hope in equal measure. Yeah. Adam, Murph, well, before we come on to the detail of it, you know, I think the big debate that I've been seeing so far is, is it the players? Is it the coaching? Kind of where where do you think you pin this one on that sort of barometer, accepting it's not a definitive one or the it's other? A, it's 100% on the coaching. It's 100% on the coaching, right? There's a couple of fundamentals. Listen, we you can make the excuses for the injuries and you can allow for a certain amount. And and listen, some of the players, there were a couple of players, not many, but there were a couple of players yesterday who were not very good. KJ Britt, for me, was was awful. But all things allowed, you have players there that are undrafted rookies, undrafted free agents, um, who who bust the gut. And they and they really put a shift in. And to especially on the offense, all those injuries, they could have walked in and been completely demoralized. That was a good offensive performance. So then you have to sit there and say, okay, so what is going wrong? And, and I'll give you, and I'll tell you, this is the, the real fact of why I think this is the coaching. You have three drives into the game. Bucky Irving has had seven carries. He's run the ball 41 yards. Mm. He gets two more carries for the remainder of the game. It's absolutely mental. Takei Dotton was targeted on seven of Baker Mayfield's first 14 passes. The rest, I think, went to the running backs. He was targeted on three of the next 36. So you've got something that's working. K. Dotton and Bucky Irving are getting you down the field. It's working. You're getting points. And did we just make a conscious decision to just move away from that? That's a coaching decision. That's not a player to see. I can't believe that Baker Mayfield has gone into the huddle and gone, oh, well, Kate Otten's done all right, but let's spread it around a bit and go somewhere else. Like He's going to go to where he wants to go. And yes, I know that the Falcons made some adjustments, but come on, I, that that is a coaching decision. They've decided to go down other routes and it's not worked. And, and, and the other thing you've got here is you've got a defensive-minded coach and this defence is bad. It's, it is a bad, bad, bad defence at this point and and I'll go into it later I've got some yeah. some numbers as to how bad it is but ultimately it, it's on coaching and you can't blame the injuries to, to Godwin and to and to Evans and say that's why we lost the football game because we had enough instances and enough of the ball to to win this game and we had enough key possession to win this game Cool. Okay, so Tim, before we get onto the lows and the lows of the defense, let's talk on the highs and the lows of the offense. Um, I think Adam's absolutely right. It felt like we scripted it and came out, and that was really effective. And then we kind of lost our way. Yeah, I I was really concerned going into this game how we would sustain drives. That was going to be my biggest problem. And yet, for the first two drives, fifteen plays, seventy yards; twelve plays, ninety-seven yards. And the time off the clock. We could have choo- yeah. we could own exactly. The clock. You know, we'll always say you, you'll beat a quarterback mm. on the opposite side by keeping him on the sidelines. Mm. Those two drives were superb. And then, as Mer said, we started to go away from that pretty much straight away. Oh, this is this is easy and so on. We didn't start well, but we rescued that part of it. But we always know it's how many points we can score because our defence is going to concede nearly as many. Yeah. If we score 50, you know, the defence could score 50. And we'd have to go 51. That's, right. the, that's the way it feels every week is we've got to score a lot of points just to hopefully allow our defence to concede 35-40 win the game. And, and and here's what's mad on that, because you're absolutely spot on there. We were 9-14 of 14 on third down yesterday. 
which is a phenomenal rate. Still you're, impressive. Yeah. You're, you're winning games. You should be winning games. We ran 12 more plays. We had the clock five more minutes than them. So you look at all the factors of the game. We had more clock. We ran more plays. We were 9 of 14 on third down. We put up more yards, 432 yards. And you have to sit there and think, how did we lose the football game? If you if you not watched this game and you'd looked at that and you'd gone, I, d- I don't know how we've lost this. And that that's coaching. Because when you're putting up those kind of numbers and you're that efficient, that's coaching. That's game management. That's key decision making in key moments of games. And that's what's letting us down. And it, it's not just yesterday, it's, it's over and over again. But you know, you look at you look at those numbers and, and you think, I don't know how, how we've lost this game. You could say the turnovers and 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 that's fair, you know, but one of them is almost a punt, so I don't really mind it. When you, you turn the ball over and like Baker's effectively punted it back to them, like I think, okay, fine. Didn't let any points off that. And the other two are bad, but... So what, 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 what do you think's happening now? Because so many times we seem really soft down the middle. Is it blown coverages? Or is it the wrong coverage in the first place? Uh, when we bring pressure, when we bring pressure well, oh God, we do it well. But so many times we don't. After the tackle, we're not bringing them down. They're getting an extra four or five feet towards a, a first down. There's so much going wrong with it. What's do you think that's coaching? Is it player? I, I think it's individual it's, mistakes. i for me. I mean, I'm interested to hear everyone else. For me, it's it is coaching and scheme design first of all. Let's look at Bijan Robinson's touchdown yesterday. Right, so Bijan Robinson's touchdown yesterday. You've got he's brought four. Okay, so he's brought four to rush. And you've you've got to you've got to, you've got to hit the quarterback or you've got to collapse the pocket, right? So you've got seven men in coverage. Kirk Cousins has stood there so long he's able to go. Don't like that one. Don't like that one. Don't like that one. Oh, Bijan's free, bomb, and he's had about four seconds. Yeah. You can't have that. And and I don't know. Like for me, Bowles is getting a little bit stale with the calling where. It's either all or nothing. And in that instance, when he plays this prevent D, where he put he, he only takes he only rushes four and he he brings seven back. When you don't have the corners like we don't, you know, you've got three very inexperienced corners. That's not their fault, by the way, on the Bijan Robinson touchdown. I'm not calling them out. And I actually don't think any of them played particularly badly yesterday. But there are there's not a leader in that room. We talked about this, Kieran, after week one, where we didn't have any corners. We're like we should go and get a corner because we Jamal Dean is not a premier corner and he's not a leader. And now he's not even in the room. So you don't have any experience. And so it feels like to me that we're either trying to, when we bring pressure, we bring the right amount of pressure. We do a really good job, but we're not getting the tackles at, at the second level. So KJ Britt for me was, was terrible. So then you are getting those big gains. We're susceptible over the middle to those chunk plays. And then you're just like, then you, you, you're you stuck between a rock and a hard place. The safeties have to come up. The the corners have to come up. And then you get beaten by a deep shot like we did with Pitts and we did with um, with Mooney yesterday because they're having to hover the linebackers because they're not executed. The linebacker level, I'd say, is more player level. But I would say the rest of it, the designs and the schemes, we're not playing to our strengths. We're playing to prevent our weaknesses. And there's only so much you can do that. And again, I, I'll get into some stats in a minute, but this team, no one fears this secondary. No one's fearing it. Everyone's like, we'll sling it on the Bucks. And it's fine because we can. Um, and we haven't. I, really I, I actually think nobody fears the defense full stop. Not, no. not, not just the secondary, the defense full stop. We talked about pressure. Mm. Yeah. Two sacks yesterday came through the middle. One of them was Kirk Cousins almost falling over and Brewer dropping on top of him. There was only one proper sack yesterday. The mm-hmm. likes of Diaby, who I, I like, he's got a good engine about him. Cheyenne, yet you, you don't see them at the quarterback as regularly as other teams. So mm-hmm. Mayfield is is regularly, in, in fairness, our offensive line is doing really, really well at this moment. And they're keeping us in the game along with Mayfield. But until we, you know, we can't. If if we're going to concede thirty points to every team every week, we are going. You know, Midfield's going to throw twenty interceptions over the next few weeks, trying to get this game back. Hundred percent. When you have got no disrespect to Trey Palmer, Sterling Shepard, 
uh, Rakeem Jarrett. Unfortunately, they're not going to frighten anybody at the moment. So they can just throw everybody at Mayfield all day. And we're always going to struggle because we're always going to be in comeback mode until this defence can sort itself out. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing I would say, right, and I've been pretty harsh on the coaching, I actually think Liam Cohen's doing a good job. I think he got a tough assignment yesterday. And you look at who he's got basically catching the football, and I agree, no one's going to be sitting there and scaring of of Jarrett and McMillan and Palmer and Ryan Miller and, and Sterling Shepard. No one's fearing that as a group. This group still put up 420 yards. Mm. So like, as, as much as no one's fearing them, they, you know, the receivers yesterday caught 330 yards. So it's like, he's basically with a ragtag of old pieces and unknown youngsters. He still put an efficient offense out there. Now we can question what, what he went away from, what he ended up going back to and, and everything. But, you know, for me, 330 yards of offense in the air, 102 on the ground. Yeah. Like that that's the fundamentals of, of good coaching and, and good pieces. And I think he, I don't know if he needs to trust his gut more or do something mm -hmm. like, but I feel like it's less on the offensive side of the ball with the coach. You say the offensive line is doing a great job. And so I feel like on the offensive side of the ball, it's tweaked. It needs tweaks, but it doesn't need a wholesale it, it, change. It, it, but the defensive side of the ball, you, you need to rip that out and start again because yeah. the, the playbook's not working. We're not playing to our strengths and, and nothing is working on that side of the ball right now. And I, I think I, that's the big one. Yeah, I would agree. The balance just disappeared yesterday. Yeah. There were 18 rushes by a running back yesterday, total. We threw mm. the ball 50 times. Yeah. That's not going to win you games all the time. But it's because we got to play catch up, or we mm. we know we got to score a lot more points. I don't think Dougie wants to come in. Sorry, we've uh... yeah. <laughs> Dougie. T tell me what you think of. I mean, we talked about our ragtag bunch of receivers. How well do you think they 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 fared versus expectations? I I think they fared exactly as I expected. Um, they they didn't seem to do much. The the, the big plays, the, the important ones I I saw. Um, went to Kay Dotton or, um, or to Richard White. And as much as Richard White's a good third wide receiver, he's not a number one wide receiver. He's, he's a, a nice option to, to bring in for, for me. Um, yeah, I I know people have been talking about trading for a, uh, for Cooper Cup. I, I wouldn't want that because I wouldn't want to risk losing, uh, losing Godwin. Is there someone else? We can pick up in the short term. That's not getting a game. I mean, I, I'd love to get Scotty Miller back. He's not playing much at um, <laughs> not playing much at uh, Pittsburgh, but that's just because I, I loved him playing. It was great. Um, so, but, I mean, so, someone said this last week. I'm going to put this out here. Bucky Irving in the slot, I think, solves a lot of our problems. We've got three running backs. We can't have them all on the field at mm -hmm. once. I loved it yesterday where we had two running backs. That made us look much more dynamic, and it, mm -hmm. it, it, it suited what we had. Stick Bucky in the slot and have Rashad and Tucker out there. And I think you've got defences have then got to think about what to do. I, I would actually yeah. go slightly the other way here. I would put Rashad White out there. Because mm -hmm. I think I was say. Bucky mm -hmm. is a much better runner mm -hmm. between the tackles. Mm -hmm. His footwork yesterday on a couple of his runs, you know, he stopped literally on a sixpence. Mm -hmm. You know, he, 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 to me, should be our first choice running back at this moment. And I would put Rashad White, who I think is a really good receiver, but not a good runner between the tackles. He doesn't hit the hole hard enough for me. You know. So we, I guess stylistically, you'd be you'd be playing effectively with two tight ends there. I think you would treat Rashad White effectively as a tight yes. end opposite well, Cotton. I disagree. Well, we, I actually think you run two tight ends and yeah. and White, and oh, okay. so I I'd run twelve personnel. So okay. I would have because the big plays yesterday was when you had um, Hey Durham out there. Yeah. And he was acting as that blocker. And I think there was a big a big run on a screen pass from Irving. And I think there was another one. Might have been White for the touchdown, actually. Uh, don't hold me to that. But I've mm -hmm. seen the thing. Where Durham was out there and he was he was causing some havoc. And I think, yeah, I'd have that 12 personnel. So I'd have Kate Otten running as a route. And I'd have Durham in there blocking and making, making waves. But I was really surprised yesterday we didn't use Sterling Shepard in that Chris mm -hmm. Godwin role. Mm -hmm. You've got a very seasoned, experienced veteran of the NFL who played in college with Baker Mayfield. 
Like, and, and that's his role. And I, I thought coming into this, it'll be, okay, so we're going to plug Sterling Shepard in there. Maybe we'll get some running back action in there. And then you're going to have Jalen McMillan play, maybe play as the X and, and go down the field. And you're like, okay, well, Jalen McMillan doesn't really fill me with confidence in the X. There was that throw that I think uh, Baker threw it to him and it hit his feet because it looked like he'd run slightly the wrong route. Um, and, that, and I think on the commentary they were saying that was on Baker. I, th I thought that was more on McMillan, where I don't think he was where he was supposed to be. Cause or the hot read or whatever, you know. Yeah. yeah, well, you don't really see Baker throw throw them short. He, if he misses, he goes long. He, he doesn't mm -hmm. tend to throw them, throw them short. So I think I like the idea of Scott. I mean, I think Dougie's got a good point. I think we need a genuine vertical threat to... Because the other problem is when you don't have that, you're basically saying to the other team, you're inviting pressure. So their their interceptions yesterday came because their safeties could come up, their corners could come up, because we weren't going over the top. We didn't really have that penetrating angle of going right, okay. And, and eight in the box means the running game then shuts down. Yeah. And and yeah. well, it means it's it's either right, it either comes to nothing. And we mm. went away from it yesterday because we were, we were trading at one point by by fourteen points, so you uh, you know you have to you have to put the ball in the air, you have to get the ball down the field quickly and and run the clock, and, it, and that's the only way you can do it. But I feel like when you yeah you can even put eight in a box or even mm. six or seven in the box, but you take away the screens, you take away the swing passes, you take away the end arounds, you take away all, all the sort of nice stuff that that White and even and Irving to an extent can, can really utilise and, and, and get some good yardage. You're taking that out of the playbook when we don't have anyone verticals. Dougie spot on, I think like Scotty Miller or, or someone with a bit of pace who can just run and be a threat out there. And you chuck it once or twice, you don't even need to hit the man. If you hit the man, great, it's bonus. But if you do it once or twice as a signal, hey, we're not afraid to go deep on you. We're not afraid. It will keep it will keep them honest. And and I think as the game got on, they could be braver. And that's where they won the game. Because they could be braver with you know, with Grant and um I can't remember was it Terrell or I think who made one of the interceptions. Because yeah. they could they could push up. And and you know, Terrell had that really big hit and then he ended up getting the uh the, the interception one play later, didn't he? And you think it's he's allowed to be brave because he's not worried that he's gonna get beat on the outside. Okay, we'll stick with Coach Dougie then. But like, because like, like, like Murph said, some of this is you don't even have to hit the deep ball. So let's think about it now from the trick plays perspective. Does Coach Dougie like the flea flicker call and the fake punt to keep the D guessing, or was it disastrous? So I've often watched, uh, you know, Red Zone or other highlights and seen other teams doing trick plays and thought, oh, we never do trick plays. I wish we would do trick plays. I wish we'd stop doing trick plays. <laughs> um, they they were so poorly executed. I mean, the 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 pun, you know, the least said about that, the better. I think we, uh, they said it all on commentary. They they should have had the the nows to 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 cancel it at the last second when they saw the coverage. So that that was poor execution all the way through. I don't think we needed that trick play from uh, from the um, the flea flicker at that time. I think it. Just go for a normal throw or a normal pass. It just seemed to be overly complicated when we just wanted to keep momentum going and, and get get up the field. So See, yeah. I, I I love those calls, but I think <laughs> that that fake punt you run on fourth and two, not on fourth and four, and I think the flea flicker, if it's not there, throw it throw it away. But you could just see Baker. There was no way that Baker was not going to throw that ball. It was kind of yeah. like a rush of adrenaline to the head. Mm. Uh, a triple coverage. Fuck it. Awesome. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it is what it is. You know, it's just like that That, that was the play. We're going to do the play. At but, some point, no, just scramble the other way and go and get five yards, you know. Yeah, but at least... I, I, I got to say to you, that's how Baker plays the game. Mm. That's how he played in Oklahoma. Yeah. That's mm. how he's played all his career. We've got to appreciate that he I will agree. throw the odd death ball in there. Yeah, but it wasn't the pass that was duff. It was the decision. So it's a flea flicker. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, I, I get the ball back. It comes back to me, and that's the guy I'm going to hit. But you've got to look over and say that guy's not open. Yeah, my, yeah. my problem with that flea flicker was we didn't yeah. run it with conviction. The yeah. handoff, the you know, mm. the pass back, there wasn't conviction. You know, it was like a lob from me as a number eight back to my scrum half in the old days to get him killed. Mm. It was mm. just a bit woolly. As, it, as, 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 as an execution from the start. 
We yeah, maybe could have run some more trick plays against the Saints when we were ahead. Use that time to try it out without the pressure and get used to doing it. I know you kind of give away a bit of your play, but, but just try out some of the aspects of that when you're you're so far ahead and you can do that. Well, we got a, we got away from some of the things like the end rounds and the sweeps yeah. that we were working earlier on in the year that were very successful. We seem to have dropped them the last two or three games. Mm. You know, get that playbook back out. Get the Saints playbook back out. Let's have a look at what we did well there. Yeah. yeah we've got Evans and Godwin. But these guys are able to catch. You know, they must be able to play the game at a reasonable standard or they wouldn't be there. Let's give them the opportunities. You know, McMillan's been a real disappointment for me. I watched him at mm. Washington and he was really good a couple of seasons ago. Yeah. And then his injury and whatever. Is he back? I'm not sure. Yeah, they're, they're definitely with McMillan. He's Is not feeling me. Yeah, I think he has exactly his confidence. I actually didn't mind the flea flicker. I was like, do you know what? It's not worked. But again, it's like a punt. You've put At least if you're going to lose it, you've lost it inside their 10. We forced them to punt. It's kind of a no harm, no foul. Like, I think sometimes we are of that inclination of it's buyer's remorse. Oh, I didn't like that. But actually, we do kind of want it, don't we? we it brings a bit of excitement. No. I actually, I, I'll rest easy at night knowing that, all right, the flea flicker didn't work. But do you know what? It was exciting. It was a bit different. It was a bit bold. At least, at least, like, they went for it. And I'm like, okay, I'm all right with that. The fake punt is stupid. It's, it's just, we are biblically, like, we have been for the last 10 years in the bottom five, bottom six of special teams. Period. Like, just in terms of the measurement of special teams. You know, last year we were the sixth worst. This year we're the sixth worst. 2022, we were the second worst. You know, then we were the sixth worst. And we've been perennially, like, bottom six for 10 years. And that's as far back as I can get data on. Right? So we are we are a bottom six. And, like, it, it just felt like... It just felt like... I, it, it, it felt like a Bucks special teams play. I remember that game at Wembley. Yeah, it, it felt, felt like, like to me we don't trust a punter that's back there anyway. Yeah, it, it felt a bit like that. It's like, oh, okay, I don't trust him. Yeah, to, you know, I, I think he's poor. You know, he gets no hang time, he gets no distance. Yeah. That's your two things you want your punter to get. Um, Can you kick Tim? Because I think that we, we've got to that point. I, I actually used to, yeah. So I'm very, but, you know, it, 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 that is the disappointing aspect of that. The, the, you know, with, with the fake punt, Bowl said, we didn't have time to come out of it. You had a timeout uh, in your you had a timeout in your hands. If you think it's all wrong, you're backed up anyway. You know, that, you that, that fake punt you. has only worked once in Bucks history, and that's why <laughs> John Lynch tops the average rush per carry <laughs> to twenty one <laughs> yards an average because really? he had one carry for twenty one yards. It, it oh just... wow, I didn't know that. Running punts. If you're gonna fake a punt, throw it. Yeah, because yeah. you've well, got everyone was, running at you. I thought I thought he was gonna drop back and throw it when he started yeah. running with yeah. it. Oh, yeah, and, I, and I'm sitting there thinking, like, what do you mean? When Bowl said that yesterday, I was like, you didn't have time to get out of it. You mean someone at the line didn't have the the call to go? Kill, kill, yeah. kill, kill. This kill. Is wrong. Yeah, pun, like that says to me, you you have basically told the special teams unit you don't trust them to change it. So you've sent them out there. And again, that goes back to coaching because I'm sure some special teams captain in there could have killed it because you looked at that and it looked, it never looked on. It, it never looked on. That. Just, well, I, there's just too many men up on the line. There are no chance. Yeah. You know, they had seven, maybe eight. Yeah. They had eight men literally, I think, lined up over the top of it. It was never going to yeah, go. The only way that works is if they're in pump return, not punt rush. And as I said, yeah. I think it works on fourth and two, not fourth and four. Yeah. Yeah. A bit more space then. Yeah. No space at all yesterday. And, and, it look, and it looked poor. <laughs> yeah, and then you just sit there and you think, we we had them at that point. Like, we were we were turning around. We, we were making stops. Like, why did you need to do it? Yeah. <laughs> why did you need to do it? But the we bright spot, some... Chase is still gold. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the one special teams thing we can rely on. I ain't going to say the curse because I don't want to put one on him. But, but I'd happily see him punt at this point. He can do kickoffs. He can punt it. Yeah. He can kick, place kick. I don't care at this point. We should free up a roster spot and get another receiver out there. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe put Chase out there as a receiver. He can seem to do it all. 
What you what did he hit from yesterday? Fifty two. Can't remember. It was it wasn't yeah. bad though, was it? Not too shabby. Yeah. And you know, no. when you see someone as good as Ku still missing kicks, you know, yeah. nothing's a given in oh, the NFL. McLaughlin is brilliant. I don't know if I said it on the last podcast or mm-hmm. I read it. His average over fifty yards is to miss the center of the goal by two feet. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, the most accurate kicker in Bucks history, and you know that's yeah, it. Yeah, but not just in, and, that, and that's in, in good company. It, accurate in terms of it being down the middle of the box. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's just quite extraordinary because he, he had a pretty average career until we came mm, to Tampa. Yeah. I we signed him, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah. not really too impressed with with Chase McLaughlin. I seem to remember he missed um, he missed a couple against us, and I was like, oh god, I don't know about that. Um, so yeah, I mean. He's he's been great. I mean, like he's missed what three in a season half. Yeah, he's he's virtually as automatic as we've had for a long time. Yeah, and I mean the the ones he's missed, they've been he's not missed anything under forty eight for us. Mm. You know, he's the opposite of you trust him, you don't trust your punters. Yeah. With one one last controversial thing we've got to talk to, you, and then I'm <laughs> going to come to each of you for your magic wand moment of what's the thing you're going to fight? What's the point of emphasis for the week in training? The touchdown that shouldn't have been a touchdown, but was it a touchdown? No camera on the goal line. Winfield breaking up the ball as it goes over the plane. Dougie, do you think that, that was that the wrong decision? I mean, I watch a lot of football, a lot of VAR. Usually with the NFL, it's cut and dried. It's just mm. amazing that there isn't a goal. There wasn't a, any camera on the goal line to give that angle. Mm. I think uh, yeah, I so thought many, that was automatic. Every yeah. game had them. I, I thought, thought that. That was the same. I've seen so many people talking about where his arm was, where his foot was. I'd say on the balance of evidence, it, he probably knocked it out before it crossed the plane. I I think it was the wrong call by the referees, but I can also understand why they didn't overturn it because there wasn't enough evidence yeah. to do so. It, it was the call on the field. Mm-hmm. You know, that angle, yeah, does mm-hmm. it look right? Are you agree, Jack? Yeah, it looks... It looks out, or certainly on its way out. Yeah. But all that nose is just got to do is touch that ball and you never mm. uh, touch that line. You never had that definitive angle. I which for the NFL that prides itself, what a load of crap from them, really, and their film crews. Yeah, I, I can't remember ever watching an NFL game and them not having an angle on the goal line. No. Yeah, really? I'm stunned. I'm stunned by that. Even I, and I know they've had that angle before at Tampa. I know we've had it at the Super Bowl. I'm sure we have. In fact, we had it. We had it last year at the home playoff game with the tush push. So I know. I know we had it. I know we've had that line. We've had it's, that. It's the TV crew. It's not. It's not down to the Bucks. But maybe that no. explains why the TV crew was had such a potty mouth later on. Yeah, yeah, it, <laughs> was, it, it, it was it was poor production of the game. But did it cost us? Possibly, because if if that had been turned over, that could have been a real momentum changer as well. I think I don't, no I, one I, either is it that that um, interception that uh, Baker threw around about the ten yard line was it ten fifteen yards? Mm. That was a big one. You know, we get that, and then we're back in it. It's it. it mm. And fair play to him. He went back and did the same throw about five minutes later and executed it perfectly. But it, I don't think it was on either time. It, it didn't get lucky the second time. He's obviously said he knew what he was doing, but that that really just was another another gut punch. It felt the, last couple of weeks I felt like we've had Jameis back at uh, quarterback. Some of the that the highs and lows we've had. Well, given given Sunday's performance, we probably would have. <laughs> well, no, 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 I'm not even going to say. That's not yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, let's wrap it up, Dougie. So we'll go around each of you. You are one magic one moment. What are you going to fix for next week? Al- What's the Al- point Al- of emphasis? Al- 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 the one going to fix a whole um, a whole defense. It's a pretty big one, but it's yeah. only got one charge in it. If I'm going to be um, realistic, uh, let's let, let's fix the inter- the um, the turnovers. Let's let's okay. get rid of them. All right, Murph. Your my, mind's the D. Like this, this D is is bad. It's given up the third most amount of yards in the NFL behind the Panthers and the Saints, who've got no offense. Mm. It's given up the fourth most amount of plays. It's given up the third most amount of or second most amount of yards per offensive play. It's given up the fifth most amount of first downs, the second most amount of completions. It's allowed the second most amount of attempts. It's allowed the third most amount of passing <laughs> yards, right? It, 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 it's allowed the fifth most Whichever amount. Whichever metric you'd pick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fifth, the fifth most amount of touchdowns. 
Like mm. it interceptions isn't bad. It's it's mid table, so that one's mm. all right. Um it's allowed the fifth work, most amount of first downs. Um rushing yards is, is okay. We've allowed only the eleventh most amount of rushing yards, which considering that we have been so good at stopping the run over the years, the fact that we're at the top like the eleventh worst is, is pretty bad. Um it's just every metric penalties. We have allowed penalty yards. We've allowed the fourth most amount of penalty yards, uh, or basically like our penalties of we've committed the fourth most amount of penalties on defense, which is just shocking. Uh, everything, every metric you want to look at this Bucks D, it's biblically bad. And the teams that were are typically worse than them when you're looking at them are teams that don't have an offense. Mm-hmm. New Orleans don't have an offense, so. They're going to be bad because they have to defend a lot because they've got no offense. They're not and bad got... field position as well, and all those exactly things. Exactly that. Yeah. So yeah. all of those things kind of culminate. Whereas mm. we don't have that problem. So we have a functioning, efficient offense that is just. It... <laughs> Imagine if we didn't. Like mm. this could be on those sort of metrics. It could be the worst. It, it, we could be talking about one of the worst defenses in history if Baker and the offense isn't out there. And then you look at it, and, uh, and the other thing is it's so predictable. We play the least amount um, of man coverage in the NFL, 15%. We play the most, therefore, the most amount of zone coverage at 81%. We've And Patines Parsons, we've given up the second most amount of dropbacks, second most amount of passing attempts. We've allowed a man coverage the fifth most amount of points in zone coverage, we've allowed the fourth most amount of points. So it's just, this this defense is just biblically bad. And, it, and as a head coach, if you're a defensive head coach and your defense is bad, that gets you fired. I'm not saying we should fire top balls. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that there is a legit, like he should be worried about his job because if that's your area of the football that you control and you manage and it's that bad, people will ask questions and the confidence will seep out of the organization. And with the first pick in the 2025 draft night, no, sorry, it's not, we're not going to be that bad. <laughs> okay. Tim, your magic one moment then. Uh, well, we, we ripped apart the defense. So I think, uh, I think we've done that one to, 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 uh, to death. I'll go with the offense and we saw some too long drives going into the game next week. We've got to keep balance. Mm. Balance is going to be hard. This is a good run defense we're going to be facing next week. Mm. But we've got to strike that balance. Baker throwing 50 times to 18 rushes, it's not, it's not good. It's not conducive to winning football. No, okay. Because that, de- that will keep that defense on the field longer than a few sustained, even shorter drives. But, you know, more than two minutes would be nice. Well, that's it. And then if it will, we'll come on to talk about the uh, the Chiefs game in our next episode. So join us in a couple of days' time uh, to find out how we're going to try and surmount perfection. So uh, from Tim, Murph, Dougie and myself, thank you. We'll see you next time. And go Bucks. Go Bucks. Go Bucks.